Could I ask, let's, let's just do a rapid fire from facilitators. And I'm going to ask the facilitators to just be ready, share one or two things from your group. Could I ask people to quietly move their way in and facilitators to get ready to just say one or two things in 30 seconds? I'm going to call on Ben Doyle to start and tell us what group you were in and what some of the discussion was, Ben. Great. Thanks, everybody. Uh, we had a really lively and I think productive conversation on advocating for state, federal, and philanthropic funds. There are a couple specific action steps that could be moved forward. I think it begins with quantifying the economic loss for businesses, homes, the municipality, understanding what the ask actually is. Um, another idea that came up was, do we have a lobbyist? Does the city have a lobbyist that's in the state house? And another idea that came up was like, there needs to be a special session and we should be advocating for that. Thank you very much. Um, yes, please. Alyssa Sharon. And Alyssa, what group were you with? Uh, I had the wastewater group, and we talked about um, community engagement and education around the state of the state of the wastewater facility. We talked about doing a risk assessment and using past reports and information that had been filed and analyses. And then we talked about natural solutions, so increasing floodplain, doing buyouts, doing plantings. And we also talked about engineering solutions, so using the road there um, and the raising of the road as a levee, doing floodgates, more stormwater and drain. And then we also talked about looking at other models. We're not the first city who's probably dealt with this. And so um, what have other folks done either in state or out of state? Thank you so much. Gary Holloway, you want to share what your group came to? Yeah. Uh, so I was uh, with the group talking about uh, resiliency planning. And uh, a, few, a few ideas that came out of that was really looking at um, who's already doing this work. There's a lot of nonprofit groups. Um, the city's involved with doing some of this work. Um, there's a lot of professionals um, who are uh, doing studies at universities um, who are already doing some of this work. So let's, let's try to glean some of those ideas and talk to the experts and talk to groups. So we, we're making sure that they're, A, part of the conversation, but B, we're not re reinventing the wheel and we're taking ideas that have already been being studied and we can start to look to implement them, implement them um, as it relates to Montpelier. Um, there's some work being done around, um, you know, pictures of the watershed so we can kind of understand kind of the greater um, picture that Montpelier plays in that watershed, so learning more from that. And then we talked a lot about uh, resources. Um, I'm probably running out of time, aren't I? Um, yep. <laughs> um, so just collect, um, you know, collect lists of, um, you know, technical resources, people who are um, already doing this work, contact information so we know, like, what, what skills that they bring. Um, and then big part of this, I'm just going to leave it on this, is two things quickly. Techno using technology to kind of communicate so that people who can't participate in these types of meetings can participate in the conversations. And then finally, Paul, um, that we, we make sure that we don't have, um, you know, there's going to be burnout in people who join a commission and step off. How can we keep the conversation going and keeping, constantly keeping people involved, um, particularly of, you know, youth and of, of all ages? Thank you so much, Gary. Um, John Copans. Uh, thank you. Uh, we had a, a group talking about investing in an adaptive downtown, and t I would say it's a little hard to synthesize, but really uh, a lot of it was developing a common set of practices for utilizing, uh, for flood proofing the existing spaces. Maybe that's installing shelving upstairs or up, up high in the, in the space. Maybe it's using inventory upstairs. Maybe it's filling basements. What is that common set of practices? Uh, but also very much thinking about short and longer term solutions. And we define short term probably as like within the end of this year versus long term really thinking about what do we need to do in a more aggressive way with downtown, including climate mitigation as really embedded in, in those strategies. And in terms of resources, building a public fund that, uh, that building owners and businesses can draw upon. And that public fund isn't just neutral, it actually defines what it wants to invest in such that those practices are being deployed and supported. Uh, and then of course expertise and the state of Vermont is gonna be critical given both the resources but also the amount of land and particularly the amount of parking that is in our, in our downtown. So. Thank you, John. And wh who are we missing? Sorry. Oh, Peter. 
Uh, we had a wonderful conversation about improving preparedness, communication, and disaster alert systems. Uh, I really want to give the city a lot of credit for showing up in force to, to listen to the community there. Uh, I think we see a role for the commission to form some small subgroup advisory panel to support the city in updating the emergency response plan and really focusing on those members of our community who uh, aren't going to be on emergency or VT alert or aren't going to be looking at the Facebook page and we're going to need some additional supports beyond our traditional modes of communication and really to think about what those traditional modes are and to continuously be updating those. And it starts with a, with a survey about how, how do you want to be notified, right? How would, if you don't have power, how would you get information? If you don't, you know, have internet, how do you want to get this? You know, it's sort of basic questions so we can make sure that our, our sort of mass broadcast system is getting as many people as possible. And then the sort of hand-to-hand, -hand, uh, you know, person-to-person -person outreach can help fill uh, the remaining gap with the necessary expertise to deal with those uh, members of the community who, who might have different needs. Um, so it was a great conversation and uh, really look forward to that. But I think it's a, an opportunity for to align with the overall commission work, but not necessarily be within the direct scope, but more of a sort of task group um, that provides input to the city's uh, uh, sort of reworking of the communications plan. So. Thank you, Peter. So I guess I would say that the discussion in this room of the commission was uh, really thoughtful. It was spark sparky. There was lots of good ideas around ways to improve the concept the diversity of the group, how we manage that, how it has expertise, but it also represents the community, whether we need to think about stipends for the group, especially, you know, as needed to, to be able to uh, allow any participant to be successful um, in, in participating. Um, so, you know, really good conversation. Uh, I think we have done a lot of work tonight. We've done a lot really fast. I really appreciate your patience with me and the way that this is pushed. I don't think we should go back and work on that vision statement right now. I think we want to be fresh when we do that. I do think that there's going to be more of these facilitated sessions, some of them very small in potentially forming some working groups around these different topics. If you, if you signed up in your room to express your interest, that's great. We have some sign sheets here that I'm hoping uh, maybe Sarah and Ben could put out on the table and allow you to sign into one of these priority areas to express your interest so that you can be called upon. Um, but we'll also put this out electronically so nothing has to be finished tonight. I just want to quickly describe where we are today in terms of thinking about um, starting to build this commission. We, we want to do this quickly. We want to continue momentum. We don't want to um, wait two months to pull this off. We're gonna be looking for a balance of life experiences, skills, expertise, and experience in, in everything from architecture to engineering to environmental science, downtown development, fundraising, land use planning, property ownership, business, low income issues, nonprofit management, financing, clean energy development, housing, and we're also going to try to keep this a small committee. <laughs> so it's gonna be tight and it's going to have a, a lot of uh, energetic personalities, no doubt. To apply for yourself or to nominate someone else, send contact information in a one paragraph description. So this is on the sheet that we gave out earlier. We can put some of these on the table out there. Um, a one paragraph description of why you wanna participate and what some of the skills are that you would bring. What could you represent on that commission? Um, and, and you'll, you'll see there's directions to send it to M. Smith in the uh, city who's gonna gather these for the review committee and title put a byline on it, Montpelier Commission for Recovery and Resilience. Um, so today we're gonna, together these organizations, the, the overarching funders, founders of this are going to review these applications and, and weigh them and try to find a, a great balanced group. But, there will be plenty of other opportunities for volunteers to drive the agenda in, in, in all of these different areas as work goes forward. I wanna close by uh, thanking the Montpelier School District for hosting us tonight, for Superintendent Bonesteel, who's been here all evening, uh, Principal Jason Gingold, who's 
been a very generous host with us. Evelyn Prim, or Evelyn Prim from the city for all the legwork and communications work she's done. Front Porch Forum, the bridge, especially the bridge, and where is Cassandra? Unbelievable, the coverage you guys have given. What a tremendous community institution. And, and not to this, and not to, not to anyone in person, but to really flesh out the story and bring us together to understand where we are. So unbelievably powerful. Uh, the Times Argus too, um, and Christopher and his great crew at Orca, we really appreciate everything you've done. Everyone who's worked tonight, from, from Lauren, uh, Megan, uh, everyone who's manned the, the uh, technology and made the online voting work when none of us had ever done this before, um, to the facilitation team. Um, I wanna thank the city. It's not easy to, you know, when you're working so hard, um, you're, you're really in it and you're fighting to do the best job you can every day. And there's a lot to listen to when you're in a city government, you know, and mostly people come to the, you when they wanna complain to you. So let's appreciate these great people who are doing good work. Let's give them a round of applause. <clears throat> Where would we be without them? <laughs> so uh, also, obviously, um, our friends at Montpelier Alive, Katie and her team, tremendous work. The Montpelier Foundation, the fact that they were able together to raise $2,330,000 already and more coming to the businesses and to follow up and support this brilliant resiliency effort. But, but mainly thanks to all of you, um, in person, people online, who are dedicated to this place. Uh, you wouldn't be here if you're, unless you're here to stand up for your community, for democracy, for the collective power we have to drive our future. And we all feel the tragedy of this moment. We all, you know, that issue of mental health wasn't just for those people. This is fundamental to where we are. We're, we're dealing with trauma. We Oh, but we especially care for people at the front line who bore the great brunt of this. The low-income folks, the business people, the people whose homes were, were so terribly damaged. Um, and they are still facing loss, uncertainty, and exhaustion. And they need our support. And we're all with them, I think. But we also know that climate change is real and that our collective future, our well-being, and especially the future of our children and upcoming generations depends on us. We understand together the need for a resilient future in this place that we love, or we wouldn't be here. So I want to thank you for being online for your neighbors, for this city, for a resilient future for our place and beyond. Let's take courage in each other and build on the unity it's going to take uh, to succeed. Now I'd like to introduce Mayor McCullough to say a closing remark. Thank you, Paul. I want to start out by uh, with some thanks. I want to thank everyone here and all the members of the community who've come out tonight and the two previous workshops here and online to, uh, to help move this uh, work forward. I want to thank the city mayor, the city manager, all the department's heads, all the uh, city employees and people at Montpelier Alive who organized and conducted these forums. And I especially want to thank Paul Costello. I know he's going to growl at this, but for... <clears throat> for his expertise and his tireless work as a volunteer to guide us through this process. It's been a long process. The first chapter of our response to the flood to uh, address the immediate crisis began even before the rain started falling. When our city employees from the Department of Public Works, the Department of Recreation, who staffed the tents and tables at the hub, and all of our public employees mobilized with thousands of volunteers and donors to meet the immediate crisis. Without them, we would be nowhere near where we are now. The second chapter of this effort began at our first meeting up at Vermont College on, coincidentally, another rainy night 
when hundreds of members of the community came out to share their experiences, ideas, and visions for the future. The breadth of ideas that we heard, we have heard, and the level of participation has been more than we see in a whole year's worth of council meetings. And I thank all of you for your input. Tonight, we embark on the third chapter of our response, deciding on our priorities and working to achieve them. This will be a long haul, bringing together community members and leaders, and I call on everyone in our community to stay involved as we move forward. The job begins tonight, and I thank you all for your hard work.